Haikyuu's Karasuno vs. Shira Torizawa is a great season of sports anime. It's 10 episodes of brilliantly boiled tension, amazing music, stunning animation, quite terrific direction, and consistently enthralling moments that encapsulate what this match means for all involved. But aside from that, what is arguably most impressive is how this match serves as a mid-series culmination of multiple protagonistic character arcs that had been steadily developing until that point. And the reason for that is quite ingeniously integrated in Karasuno's opponent, the seemingly indomitable, cohesively written Shira Torizawa team. This is a fearsome team, built around a very distinct philosophy, but where lesser stories would have simply presented this philosophy and left it at that, Haikyuu ingrains its conception with the context and characterization of its coach. Tanji Washijo, shunned by coaches as a child due to his short stature, grew to simultaneously hate and admire the strength of gifted height and power in volleyball. So while he could never fulfill his dreams as a player for reasons he sees as beyond his control, he vicariously plays out these dreams as a coach through his players, using the types of weapons that rendered him helpless as a young boy. This led to a team philosophy built on pure power and height, and through finding a diamond that ticked all the boxes in Ushijima, he dedicated himself to optimizing these gifts with the structure of his team. The name of the game here was Efficiency. Not only selecting the best physical specimens, but the types of players that would get the most out of Ushijima. For instance, the setter Shirabu is explicitly stated to be less talented than the backup setter Eita, but he is also less individualistic. He feels no need to prove himself or shine, and he is happy in the ace's shadow, so naturally he gets the nod ahead of the more skilled but more ego-driven Eita, who can't be trusted to give himself fully to the style of the team. In addition to this, Ushijima has tall and strong defensive teammates to cover for him, and a young, powerful tool to look up to and challenge his senpai. In short, Washijo resorted to building the team around the types of players that signaled his defeat as a boy, and he narrow-mindedly pursues this ideal, because if this concept is ever defeated by an entirely contrasting one, it would mean that maybe he could have achieved his dream. And that's something that he cannot bring himself to accept due to how hard the regret would hit. Functionally and tactically, Shira Torizawa is a well-oiled machine due to this. Spurred on by their coach's conviction, drilled to follow a monolithic, unbending philosophy that took root in the heart of its leader. Efficiency, Discipline, and Strength and this team intention is not only mechanically sound, but emotionally ingrained in the character journeys of the players. For instance, Tendo is the high-risk, high-reward blocker whose guess-blocking instincts are just so good that he fits into the powerful unit seamlessly. He was always avoided and made fun of as a kid, and so he developed some small-scale psychopathic tendencies that are gratified when he gets a good block in. He just wants a place to feel good, and the volleyball court is where he can do that. Complemented by a team that knows his game inside and out, and a coach that can support his erratic style. He's a wild card, but he fits the philosophy like a glove. In addition, Goshki is an aspiring first year desperate to prove himself and train his fundamentals to become the ace. He is Ushijima's heir, with one eye on his future and one on the present, doing his best to keep up with Ushijima and make his team proud. And of course, Shirabu doesn't need the limelight, but is all too happy to supply huge weapons that can tear through anything, considering it his singular motivation as a player. <laughs> It is his goal as a setter to not be seen. And of course, Washijo develops convictions of his own in parallel to his broader vision as he comes to understand Hinata. Here he sees someone who has not been blessed with natural gifts that are sometimes required for volleyball, someone like him. But he also sees someone who is getting agonizingly close, who is inching his way towards defying this fate. He cannot allow himself and his team to let Hinata reach the summit because of his petty pride, so he reinforces this philosophy again and again throughout the match to deny Hinata the glory that he himself was never able to attain. 
Whether they're winning or losing, Washijo drills this style into his players and carries it out throughout the match in full force in a desperate attempt to preserve his ego. This all feeds in together to make Shira Torizawa a force of nature of a team in a way that satisfies them all. They have plenty of personality, but the impression they leave is one of machine-like optimization, nearly inhuman in a way. This is exemplified pretty clearly through the OP's reference to them as a mountain for Katasuno to climb, and as some faceless opponents skulking in the shadows. But it is best personified through the character of Ushijima himself. He isn't very expressive, he has very few flaws, and he's rather stoic, and this is exactly what he needed to be. In total contrast to the expressive, flamboyant, and deceptively emotional Oikawa, Ushijima is rather simple. Just like his team, and just like the obstacle that Karasuno needed to scale. Simple does not mean easy, of course, but it characterizes this season well. Counter their philosophy and stop Ushijima, and you win. The match versus Seijo was about revenge for Katasuno and a passing of the torch of sorts from Oikawa to Kageyama, so the style and structure reflected that through placing a sharp focus on the conclusion of this part of Oikawa's journey. It was much more variable in energy, a pretty personal battle between two teams who knew each other well. It served as a great match of growth for Yamaguchi and Kageyama, but overall, it had the inflection of maintaining or carrying over most of the character arcs rather than reaching many apexes, and it was a match where the mechanics and symbolism were secondary. The game against Shira Torizawa is a different story. For Karasuno, the loss to Seijo and the summer camp failures were catalysts for development, and the team grew by leaps and bounds. But the chance at Nationals represented the chance for these characters to touch the heavens and clear hurdles that they never thought were possible. And what better way to stimulate this growth narratively than through a force of nature of a team and a seemingly unscalable mountain of a man? There is, of course, the proclamation that Hinata made to Ushijima at the beginning of Season 2 that serves as a platform for his development, along with both his unintentional defiance of Washijo's petty will and his growing game sense and maturity, exemplified beautifully by his delayed run for the final point. Kageyama has a bit of a baby point to prove through his words to Ushijima as well, though this match didn't really have too much for him. Yamaguchi proved himself here by carrying his good form into a match against such strong opposition, proving that his work against Seijo wasn't a fluke. Nishinoya viewed Ushijima as his mountain to climb, probably the most difficult opponent he had ever faced, and adapting and learning to deal with him was a great personal triumph, as well as being pivotal for the success of the team. At the same time, for the third years, succeeding at Nationals represented something untouchable, unreachable given where the team started with them as freshmen. They're in a place that they dreamed of, so close to their big goal that they can taste it. But there is, of course, this ever-present, faceless obstacle looming in their way. One that they always knew was there, but never conceptualized until now. And when they clear the hurdle, it's ecstasy. And lastly, of course, there's Skishima, who finds his moment as he faces and embraces his biggest challenge ever head-on, and accepts that he loves this damn sport. These character journeys all vary, but the common thread between them is that they are defined by this wall. Hinata's proclamation, Nishinoya's excellence, the third year's final choice, Skishima's passion, it was all stimulated in response to unyielding, awesome strength. There is simply no better team for them to have played for this all to have been carried out. It's an integration of sublime story structure and opposition team design, substantiated by logically and emotionally consistent reasons for the team to behave that way in the first place. And this effectiveness is seen clearer than ever through the faces of the Karasuno players as they charge for the final all-in synchronized attack. It's slowly dawning on them that they've done it. They've scaled the mountain. It means something different for each of them personally, but the same thing for them as a team. 
being able to prove that Karasuno can overcome the improbable and stand on a grand stage. An evolution from fallen crows to carnivorous, adaptable beasts. A powerhouse school once again. And this impact would just not have been the same without such pristinely characterized and designed opposition. Quirky and not lacking in personality, but unyielding and cold in impact, built on a philosophical foundation to conceptually oppose Karasuno's unrestricted flexibility, Shira Torizawa is exactly what this narrative needed them to be and more. Many thanks for watching.